Hey, what's up you guys? Welcome back to Daily Driven E36. So today, uh, this is kind of like a part two on one of my previous videos when I did Venice rebuild on my S54. And if you guys haven't seen that video, uh, here's how we actually end it. So it was my first time doing the Venice. Uh, nobody was helping me, nobody was, you know, uh, telling me what's going on, what to do and whatnot, but got a little overexcited. I was super nervous to start the engine. For some reason, I usually not that nervous after doing any work on the engine, but uh, got a little overexcited because the car started fine and I did prime the oil. I disconnected a uh, fuel relay and turn the ignition to crank the engine and all that and it was fine it started fine and then all of a sudden that so um, I don't know what actually went wrong because I did time it right I did everything good um, the only thing that I think that went wrong and correct me if I'm wrong or right <laughs> but I forgot to connect my uh, uh, solenoid pack for the uh, or solenoid for the Venice and if you guys know what the what it does it sends out the oil uh, to the Venice at certain RPM and certain uh, drive or whatever you want to call it and it adjusts the timing as the engine runs and since the, that solenoid was disconnected there was no oil going into the Venice and which means I messes up the timing and I think that's what happened so after it did that uh, I said that's it my engine's done goodbye and I was planning on going to a Beamer Fast this year with this car and I was super disappointed and I was like well there goes my S50 engine going back to this car so but I didn't give up I actually took the valve cover off I took the Venice off, retimed it, and I did mention in that video that I couldn't turn the engine though by hand. Um, it was turned like not even maybe like a quarter to uh, the right and then to the left, and it just kept on hitting. And I'm pretty sure it was valve. Um, so I took the Venice off. I took the chain for. Um, uh, chain gears took the chain gears off retimed it I honestly don't know how bad was the timing at that point because I couldn't turn the I couldn't crank the engine and I couldn't check my timing but retimed it uh, I did connect my uh, solenoid second time so here's the video of second start on this car or engine So it ran fine, it actually idles fine, it doesn't knock, doesn't, you know, doesn't do anything weird, but uh, it still doesn't have same power that it did when I did the first swap. So I know that um, you have to kind of break it in, you have to drive it a little bit, and I believe it's 200 miles to kind of get those uh, seals and uh, everything to kind of start working and um, do whatever it was supposed to do you know in the Venice so we'll see uh, I haven't driven it that much I think I only drove like 50 miles or whatever but uh, I think like every time I drive it I feel it a little more and more it gets better and um, the rattle went away my uh, sport button start working it's still again it's not the way it was when I did the first swap but it's back so one of the things, and here's the thing, okay, um, you know those people that do videos on their own cars and they go, there's five things that I hate about my car, blah, blah, blah. So I really don't get that. I don't, I don't understand why people do or make those videos. I mean, I understand you can say that uh, there's five things that I don't like or something that I would change or something like that, but you can't really say I hate 
because if you hate your car and there's like five things that you hate about it just get rid of it sell it whatever but with that being said <laughs> there's one thing that i really really hate about this engine and hear me out though if you worked on this engine you would agree with me and comment below if you do and i know there's a difference i think in the year because uh, my crankshaft bolts, you know how usually there's only one bolt, it's usually 22, 24 millimeter and you can just crank the engine. On this one, I don't know who, why, you just, why they do that, but this is the tool. This is the tool you have to use to crank your engine. What the heck is this? Uh, there's not one bolt. Um, I can't I couldn't find a bolt to kind of show you guys what it looks like I will put picture so you can see it but this is the socket this isn't the actual size of the socket but this is the style of the socket the uh, the crankshaft has four four bolts and this is the tool for it I don't like and you can see uh, one side is bigger than the other and you can have you can see that um, like one right here is for your wrench on both sides and here's the thing with this first of all it doesn't really like I don't know why they did it on the side uh, it's probably multifunctional because well more multifunctional for different cars because I'm, I'm guessing there's uh, bigger and a smaller uh, bolts on different cars but BMWs at least um, but it's offset it on the side if it would have been in the middle it would be a little more easier but it's offset on the side. You can't really put it on because it kept on slipping. Um, it's it gets too close to the pulleys, so I kept hitting and busting my knuckles. If you put the extension on, now the offset is even worse, and it keeps sliding off. And I start cutting my elbows because there's not enough room in between, like the engine. And I did take the radiator off, but you can, you still have. Uh, the AC cooler and I did figure out later that you just take the towel and just cover it up it makes it easier but uh, at one point I couldn't even turn the engine because I got so tired and you can't really turn it uh, counterclockwise because you have to keep on turning clockwise like going right so if you miss it now you have to go two circles again to get it to the top dead center so this is, again, if you've done this, you agree with me. This is one of the stupidest things that I've seen on a car. And I like the engine though. <laughs> this, is, this is the only thing that I hate is the bolt. I would change it, but there's nothing that I can actually do to change it. But I don't, I don't know. But this is the tool. Um, I've showed this before in my previous video, but this is the tool that I got for it and uh this it was separate but the only thing that you actually come back here the only thing that you need which is really really important is this these two you don't have to have two but it's really helpful to actually lock your timing your camshafts uh in right position and you can lock both them both of them at the same time like and this one for your crankshaft balancer this is for your crankshaft bolts so these are here i really don't know what's up with this one or this one well, actually this one you can turn your uh camshaft gears or whatever they call but anyways this here i got this separate i think it was like 20 bucks or something for your splines for your venice you don't have to get this one but i would recommend uh if you are planning on rebuilding it it's not that expensive i think it was this one was 20 bucks and the rebuild kit for those uh, splines were like 20 bucks too so 40 bucks so uh, again, car runs good. The bumper, uh, 
I finally, I had this bumper for a really long time. It was white. I was going to paint it. Finally went to the paint shop. I had them uh, mix the paint in the can. Um, I was using the actual like a car clear coat. Not on those rattle can because those actually don't have UV protection. So they will burn under sun or fade, whatever. But you can see the color is way up. It just, uh, and I knew when I started painting, I knew that it's it's not gonna be, way, it was way too bright, but I still painted the whole thing. I did clear coat it. I don't know why, but I will have to repaint that. But today, it's a different story. We're working, hold on. UPS. So today I'm going to be installing, I'm going to be actually replacing and installing a new oil cooler. Um, mine's down right here. I kind of like the way it looks, but I mentioned that in my previous video that uh, when I made this hose, is uh, it's actually leaking where the clamps are and decided to just get after market one. The AC line I had not made. This one right here. And this is like a custom made. Uh, this side is off of E46. That size is E36. That one goes on your uh, cooler or condenser. And this one goes to your AC. And the thing is, when I uh, actually test fitting this before I had it made, this is where it's gonna be going right there. My radiator was out and I test fit it, it was fine. Then I put the radiator back on and that hose, the radiator, the bottom hose is actually in the way. Uh, so the AC line comes out to right where the AC hose is. Uh, not the AC, but the radiator. So I have to redo this, get the new one. Uh, if it would have been like at least an inch longer, I would have been fine with this because you can slightly bend it back and forth and make it work, but it just, probably not even an inch like half an inch it would have been working but it would have worked but whatever it is what it is at this point so uh, I have to go back to the shop had them remake this this one was $85 actually by the way so they made this uh, custom connector and then put this on and same thing on this side so but today I'm gonna be doing this this is my oil cooler. So let's open it up and see what it looks like. What do you guys think? I think this is not way too long. So what do you guys think? This versus that. Half. It's almost the same. So two options. Put it inside. Or put it here. I don't know. I kind of like it here, but. Let me think about it. So, yeah, I'm going to do a car steering reservoir and think about this because the, the reason why I just don't want to. I mean, I can't move it later, but the reason why I don't want to just do it in this random place is these hoses are pretty long that I have to actually there we go. these hoses are pretty long and I have to cut them and if I cut them I can't really extend them later then I'll have to buy new hoses if I want to move the cooler so and I don't want to just loop these and keep the long hose in here so maybe actually that's what I'm gonna do but uh, I'll think about the position but let's start working on this here. So 
so I don't think I like the way this setup is gonna be. Here's one of the houses. Goes behind this uh, heat shelf for the intake. Goes all the way down. And then comes out here. Um, I really like the OEM setup. It was kind of coming out from here, going all the way down. It is kind of pain in the butt to actually put it in and out. Um, so, especially when you have power steering reservoir here. Not enough room. But, it comes out here. Where is it? So now, again, it's either going to be here. Or this thing's gonna be looking up this way and kind of like this. So I don't know. So I'll just route these hoses back here. If I need to cut them, I still can cut right here and then reattach it. But well, still kind of thinking about where I want it, here or here. So, okay, don't make fun of my tools. I'm tiny this, I know there's like special tools and stuff for it, but I'm not gonna buy them just to use them once. Well, hopefully it's going to be one time use. I'm not going to redo this later, but um, my uh, reservoir is there. I probably have to, it's full right now, but I'm pretty sure as soon as I start the car and stuff, the oil is going to go all the way inside and it's not going to be enough because what I did is I drained whatever was in the tank. Plus I got the hose and I uh, blew the air in one of the hoses to let the other side come out and get the old oil or the um, the fluid it's a training fluid inside actually ATF to get it out because it's all dark and black and all that stuff so just want to refresh it it's not uh, I didn't get 100% all the fluid out but I think it's better than what it was so uh, I'm gonna get the fluid for that what else get the AC line fixed or see if I can actually still kind of make it work because like I said it's just barely short if not then I'm gonna have to get that done so I can finally get that covered up and the reason again why I have this open is for the AC this is gonna be AC lines or the not the lines but the wires because uh, the idle it's not gonna be it's not gonna idle good with the AC on and stuff so I had to connect these and I didn't want to cover this because they do rip uh, if you're wondering what the heck is this, this is OEM cover. <laughs> I did a hydro dip in, and it, this is my first time. It didn't come out good, but uh, probably gonna redo it. I don't know what do you guys think. I don't, I don't really like it, so it doesn't go with it, with the the whole setup I have here, or not necessarily I have, but the the engine bay. It doesn't look good, so. Get rid of that or redo it or do something. Um, get the fluid. Still working on figuring out where do I want the oil cooler. Probably gonna just keep it there for now at least. I do like the OEM oil cooler that was sitting on the bottom. If it would have been wider with the M3 bumper, it looks pretty nice. It, it looks kind of like an inner cooler, but uh, it was too skinny. Um, so I don't know we'll see like I said I'm it's right there still working on it so for now I'm gonna go to work and um, on the way back I'm gonna pick up whatever I need and probably hopefully we'll finish this up not today but it's gonna be tomorrow but it's still gonna be in this, this video so see you in a little bit So, okay, quick update of my mess, what's going on in here. So, I finally got the AC line. 
connect it. Uh, it's right there. Going underneath, I did put air in the system. I used one of these things. Connect on one, one of these. Get the air hose with this and let the air go in. So it's uh, it's under pressure right now. So I'm gonna uh, see if it holds. I sprayed uh, soapy water on the connectors, and so far nothing's leaking. And the thing is with the oil cooler, what's going on? I cannot figure out where to put it, and it's driving me crazy right now because it would not fit inside the grill. It would not fit under uh the reinforcement for the bumper and i mean i can make it work but since i'm replacing the bumper i'll have to kind of custom make the bracket or whatever for this bumper um just regular e36 and then when i change the bumper which hopefully is going to be this week for that m3 bumper and if i'm using m3 bumper i can actually mount it right here and it's going to be in the op opening where the uh, the happy face is but with this one it will not stay here because the bumper is keeps on pushing on the rear um, on the cooler so I'm gonna clean up in here and show you <laughs> uh, where I'm gonna put it so don't judge me though so okay finally done so here's where the oil cooler is I don't know, it might not be a perfect spot because I do want both fog lights. Just like that side. Um, these are, I tinted them in a yellow film, but I'm gonna take this off and paint them in yellow or um, probably get the yellow fog zone or whatever. But for now, oil acrylic is gonna be here till I paint that bumper, this one, and which. Hopefully it's going to be this week and go away. What are you doing? Uh, and put it on and relocate the cooler from here. It's going to go all the way somewhere here. So, um, like I said, I was going to test drive the car in this video, but there's no point of test driving because like I said, um, it doesn't really drive the way it used to when I did the first swap. It is getting there though, and I think it's just the Venice is still breaking in. Um, I only drove like 50 miles or something, so I will do that in the next video as well as the AC, even though I did hook up the line. My wires are not connected, and yes, I am going to be getting rid of this. Uh, my lines are not connected, or the wires for the AC to work correctly, and today is Saturday, so nobody's working to charge my AC anyway, so... Um, probably this is it so this is it for today's video but for next video I do want to do a price breakdown from the day one when I did the swap uh, I wanted to do a like a separate video on the price breakdown how much everything cost me and all that even though uh, you can buy engine for three or four thousand dollars it doesn't mean that you're done there's actually you're gonna spend if not the same amount maybe even twice the amount on uh, the maintenance if your engine doesn't have all that so I want to talk about that I'll talk about the Venice how much it cost me and how much money I actually did spend even though I almost ruined the engine um, I'll talk about that as well and hopefully we'll do test drive and this is it so if you guys like the video please hit thumbs up subscribe if you haven't and look out for my new videos see you next time